Obviously, we are very excited and, and into the planning for the Washington game. Uh, uh, we will have what equates to our Wednesday practice tonight and uh, look forward to hopefully having another great practice. We had a good one yesterday, had a really good week last week. Uh, looking forward to uh, uh, being at our best on Thursday night. The last time we played on Thursday night did not go well. Hopefully we're better uh, suited for this contest and, and uh, we'll play a much better game in Seattle. Uh, looking forward to the game. It's that time of year where people are fighting for their postseason lives. And uh, certainly both of uh, us and uh, Washington are in that, in that uh, situation. So uh, it should be a well uh, played game and, and certainly highly spirited. Yeah, well, usually you don't like doing that twice, you know, especially when you're in a quarter school because uh, you're missing class, two classes of, of 10. Uh, but, you know, at this juncture as a program and to have the chance to be on the, the national stage, uh, you, you want to take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, but in future years, we won't do that more than one time. Never say never, right, Mark, as he raises his eyebrows to me. Mark knows I don't like saying no. <laughs> Well, it's, it's not uncommon every time you're on the phone with uh, recruits to hear them say, I saw you on television, I saw this, I saw that. So, yeah, and, and when you're on a, in a captive audience like a Thursday night audience where there's really only one game on, uh, then it's, it, you know, obviously you have a, a great opportunity to, to make a, a statement if you can. Did you change anything about this week's scheduling? The, this Thursday as opposed to the last Thursday? Uh, subtle changes. It really isn't much you can do differently. Uh, you want to make sure your coaches are off for that Friday because it's a great recruiting opportunity with all the high school games going on. You want to make sure that your guys have uh, as much time away as they can uh, and enjoy being a student, uh, but you also have to get into the game. I think the fact that we're doing it for a second time gives us you know, at least some familiarity with it. Uh, and, and we'll see how they adapt to it. Your thoughts about going back up to Washington? Uh, you know, it's, it's always going to be associated with memories. It always will be. There's no way to avoid that, uh, nor would I want to. I've got a lot of great memories up there. Uh, you know, a lot of water's gone under the bridge since the, my uh, leaving their program and, and, uh, and they're excited about the future of Husky football as I'm excited about the future of UCLA football. So I, I don't think the storyline is as uh, prevalent as it may have been in my first time going back. But uh, for me personally, certainly always going to be memories. Has it gotten easier to make that program? Uh, well, <laughs> it, it's easier from a standpoint of the emotion of it. But uh, no, the, the the game is always going to be a you know a, no pun intended dogfight. I mean it's 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 going to you, you have to go up there and play and you have to play very hard. You know I go back to when I was playing here uh, and remembering the games between UCLA and Washington as just really really physical physical games and uh, that carried on uh, while I was an assistant coach here. I remember going up there in 19. Uh, what was the year Deloiso made the field goal? Was it 91 or 90? I want to say 90. 90, where they were going to be the number one team in the country, and we went up there with a, uh, you know, I think we were four and five or five and five at the time, and and, and ended up uh, beating them 25-22 on the last second kick, uh, and they ruined their chance for a national championship. So uh, this is this is a a very very. Uh, physical game historically and and obviously I think with where the two programs are right now and what's at stake for you know their hopes in the postseason I think this will be that way again. I mean for you personally though has it gotten easier to go there I would imagine the first time it was. 
Emotionally, yes, no question. Emotionally, yes, there's no question that it's easier now. Uh, I still have my two or three friends. <laughs> they've, they've stayed with me over the last few years, and, and uh, so I'm okay. Anyone that's working there now? Huh? Uh, oh yeah, their, uh, their video guy was, uh, Bill Wong was with us. He's a great friend and uh, God, I'd have to look and see who's all still working. At, I know Billy's still there. Uh, I don't know who else in, in the office and all the other different places. Coach, how does it affect your game plan with the uncertainty over Locker and the fact that it could, there's like a 50% chance of rain in Seattle? Well, I'll tell you two things. Number one, there's no uncertainty over Jake. He'll play. Absolutely will play. And there's really no uncertainty about rain. It will. <laughs> I've lived there plenty enough times to know. It might, it might not rain all throughout the game, but there'll be rain. And so I don't think either one of those poses a real issue. I think we have to just know that both are going to be the case. What the cause of the, what's the bigger issue of the two? Well, Jake Locker is a fabulous football player. And I've said it on a number of occasions. I got to watch him in high school. I got to watch him up close and personal at a, at a summer camp while I was still in the NFL. And uh, I've now admired his play uh, uh, while watching videotape as well as watching him play against us last year. Uh, he's, a, he's a great football player. And I know it will be a big game for him to play in his final game as Husky Stadium. And, you know, with all the pomp and circumstance with uniforms and all the different things that go on with a night game. and. Uh, the unusual nature of a Thursday night game, it'll, it'll, have a lot of, it'll have a lot of energy, no question about it. But uh, we've got to find a way to corral uh, number 10. So he's more in the factor than the wet weather then? Yeah, the weather is, is for both teams. Right. I mean, are you, are you at that state? I mean, oh, we're well aware of the math, if that's the question. Yeah, I, but, but all we can do this week is win one. And, and, and we've got to do everything we can to focus on the one. That, and, you know, that's, that's true of any time you start prognosticating or looking ahead of a schedule. I mean, it's, it's fun to do and, 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 and probably important to do. But you have to then come back, reel it back in, and focus on what you need to do to win the one that's available to you, which is Thursday night in Seattle. How important is being full? It's uh, it's it's a huge thing uh, because it allows you the the just from the coaching standpoint the extra practices. It also allows you to have that one more time on stage. Usually you're not playing. You usually got a a chance to be the only game on. Uh, you have a chance to finish the season with a great victory and uh, it just is a springboard into recruiting. Uh, it, it parlayed itself well last year and uh, given all that's happened in our program with the attrition and so forth, I think it would be a terrific uh, feather in the cap of these kids to, to earn postseason. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, you never want to derail momentum. You never want to do that. Uh, I mean, we've got a story to tell, but no one's interested in it. <laughs> you, 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 we've got to fight, scratch and claw, and find a way to get to postseason. And that's what we're going about. And, but the only thing we can do to help that cause is to do our best this weekend. Uh, and so we've got to play really, really well against uh, the University of Washington. How much does their three-game blowout streak here affect their mentality and their approach to this game? You know, uh, I think they're looking at this is a three-game season. You know, I think, uh, and by the way they rested their players, and, you know, I think they're just kind of gearing up for this is the stretch run. We're going to go play our best football right now, and I think they put a lot of that behind them. Yeah, it's an unusual, uh, and I've said this a year ago, uh, I mean, it, from top to bottom, especially with the improvement of Washington State, who showed it in, in grand style this last weekend, um, you have a un, I mean, look look at it contextually and just go by by Cal. I mean, it, it, Cal is with an eyelash. How how far was the kick? 
that they missed? 29. 29 yards? Probably within two steps of the kickoff. Yeah. Anyway, the, the, uh, did the kicker got called for a penalty before? Yeah. He'd made it? He made it. <laughs> but that game's 15-13. The week before, Cal yeah. beat Washington State 20-13. to I mean, and those are the, one the yeah, 1 in 10. That's, that's where you are. And, and uh, I mean, the games can be unbelievably close or they can just be one-sided because one showed up ready to play and one didn't. And, and so we have to, uh, you have to make sure you show up every weekend. This, I, I watched the Arizona State-Stanford game. That was a phenomenal game of, of uh, you know, bare knuckle fighting, you know, to, the, the, the way they played each other was really fun to watch if you're a football fan. So uh, our conference, you, you don't get any weekends off. That's a fact. What, what separated people at this point? Literally, is it somebody showing up to play, or is it just the way certain teams match up against each other? Well, some of that, and some, some of it, obviously, some teams feel much more comfortable at home and in, in, in the environment that they're in and so forth. But really, it comes down to the consistency of the quarterback and the consistency of the uh, ability to stay on the field and, and not turn the ball over and so forth. You know, uh, if you can do those things and do them well, then you're going to be in every game. And then if you've got that consistent quarterback, you're going to find ways to win games. You guys uh, defensively took some lumps for three or four games there and kind of showed up against Oregon State. What was the difference? Defense? Well, uh, we took care of the ball offensively. You know, we so limited the amount of plays, but but really you point to third down defense and tackling. We did a better job tackling, especially given probably the most elusive back in the conference in Jaquiz. We got him down. I mean, held him, I think, to 60 some odd yards rushing, right? Uh, and he's a perennial thousand yard back in this league without a fumble. And I mean, he's really a sensational player. And he caught, I don't know how many passes, but we got him down. And uh, He's the leading receiver in the history of Oregon State's uh, running backs. So we have to tackle and we have to, and now the next thing is to try to cause some turnovers. You know, we've been a little bit down in that regard. You can point to the pass rush as the reason, but ultimately we've got to cause some turnovers. It's going to be a huge thing in these final three games to win the turnover bar margin. We're, we've been woeful. I think we're minus eight on the year. Uh, and We've got to find a way to see. My, my goal is to get it all the way back to zero. We can go to plus eight in the last three games. We're going to like our chances. And, and I just was watching television again this weekend, and someone went plus 11 in their last four games And so uh, to turn the, turn the tide. So uh, it can happen, and, and we just got to make it a goal. Pass protection has been an issue, obviously, for you. The last four games, you, uh, the teams you played were the four best pass rushing teams in the conference, now you're facing the worst in the conference. What kind of opportunities that, does that give your passing game? Well, uh, that remains to be seen. I mean, you, you like the chances to get the ball off, but, but you still have to block them. And, you know, we have to, uh, we have to make sure that we have some measure of balance. But again, with Jake Locker, in my opinion, for sure playing, and the way to keep that offense off the field is to keep our offense on it. And so you want to make sure you have some balance and take the time of possession again as a, as a uh, weapon. So uh, just because we feel like we can throw, don't, we can't go helter skelter with that. When did you decide to go to the beer? <laughs> well, I was going there for a while until you found <laughs> again. <laughs> you He's following his role model. <laughs> Uh, we've got uh, a couple of guys still nicked up. Uh, I had mentioned that Pat Laramore was still in the uh, throes of figuring it out. The likelihood is he's going to have surgery, uh, and it'll probably happen next week. Uh, but uh, that's where we stand with Pat. And then uh, I think everybody else's status is as it was, and hopefully uh, guys like, you know, uh, Sheldon Price and Nelson Rosario will be back closer to full speed. When did you make the decision on uh, Well, it was really Pat's decision. You know, Pat got a lot of opinions, and, and uh, you know, while he wants to play, he also wants to be well. And, and uh, the advice that he was given 
made it seem much more likely that it'll have a full recovery if he goes ahead now rather than risk any further damage. And I'm fully in accord with that. I think that's smart. And so that'll happen probably here in the next week. Shoulder surgeries that involve some measure of labrum issues are usually five to six months. Yeah, so no bowl game, for sure no bowl game. Uh, but, and I don't know how much he'd have a spring ball. You know, it's, uh, probably not much contact. You said the labrum, but it sounds like he did some I think I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure in telling you that. That's why I would bring it up, uh, that there's going to be surgery, yeah. How's Nelson Rosario? Is he 100%? Not 100%, unfortunately, uh, but getting closer. You know, it's, he got hurt on October 2nd, so you'd hope that uh, he can start to round back into form. He's certainly been out there and working at it, but uh, we're, we'll hope that uh, he can return to, you know, game changer that he once was. Is the situation with him, because he mentioned that he tweaked it again last week, I think he did too. I mean, is the situation again as he starts to make progress and then a little bumps in the road happen? Is that been the problem? Well, uh, you know, when you're trying to push through things, there's, you know, things that can happen along the way. and, and I don't know if it was a scar tissue issue or it was a, uh, uh, a, a new injury, but uh, it certainly slowed his progress. But uh, he looked better yesterday, and hopefully we'll get a great practice out of him today. I know he's dying to get back in there. How about Sheldon? He... Sheldon looks better. I think Sheldon's close to being game ready. You know, there's always that little trepidation that goes with getting back into full contact after you've been nicked up. and. Uh, you know, he told us he was ready if we needed him a week ago. Uh, but, you know, getting the extra now 12 days of rest, I think, is huge. And in practice, he's, he's looked like he's coming back to form. So hopefully we'll get a great game out of him. Everybody good? All right, thank you.